Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're doing a radio replacement in this Pontiac Vibe slash Toyota Matrix. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to remove the factory, or in this case, aftermarket radio. We'll head over to the bench, show you the parts that we're going to need for our install, including the dash kit and the wiring harness. We'll come back here and get everything reinstalled. Let's get started. This Pontiac Vibe is basically identical or the same platform as a Toyota Matrix and the electrical components are almost identical if not the same as like a Toyota Corolla. Uh, fortunately for us the dash disassembly here is very simple as well. Um, previous installer went ahead and already installed a single DIN back in the day. It looks like it's just an aux unit. Today we're going to be doing a full double DIN um, and a backup camera. Backup camera will be in a separate video. So the first thing we need to do is get this aftermarket or factory radio on out. Just depends on your case. Um, we have a panel tool and a 10 millimeter socket. First thing we need to do is grab our panel tool here and go ahead and pop this guy on out. Literally just held in with clips. Okay, now with this out of the way here, one quick note, you do have your airbag light for the passenger um, in the bezel itself, which we've unhooked. At any point, if you do accidentally turn on the vehicle, it may actually set off the light on the dash, which may have to be cleared by the dealer. So while this is unplugged, don't turn on the key. Next here, we have our 10 millimeter socket. There's gonna be four 10 millimeters up and around your radio. Okay, pull out your radio. Again, whether it's factory or aftermarket, same disassembly process. Go ahead and disconnect your harnesses. All right, so we went ahead and pulled this all on out. Everything's been disconnected. At this point of time, let's head to the bench to show you the parts that we're gonna need for our install. All right, so here at the bench, now the parts that we're gonna need for the install, first and foremost, is the radio that the customer wants us to install. Now it's the Joybring. Uh, doubled in radio that features CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, great value for the price and it comes with a backup camera which we're going to be doing in a separate video. Now to accommodate that in the factory location we need a couple of install parts. First and foremost is the dash kit. Now this does call for the Metro 95-8224. This essentially will accommodate the doubled in radio in the factory location. If you're doing a single DIN, we can link that single DIN kit in the description of the video as well. Wiring wise, we do need a wiring harness adapter. Believe it or not, there isn't a smart harness available for this vehicle. And what was already installed is the harness that basically is only available for this vehicle. It's the Metro 70-2105. Now it's not a smart harness. And additionally here, the analog um, accessory wire, it's actually not pinned. This red wire doesn't go anywhere. So this kit usually comes with a long red wire that you have to run to the fuse box. And we'll show you where you're supposed to tap that in. You fish that through the dash to the fuse box that's kind of by the kick panel on the driver's side front corner. Uh, we'll, again, we'll show you where that that is located here in a minute. Our long red wire isn't included here because it's already in the car being that this harness was previously used. Now additionally besides your harness adapters you do need your antenna adapter which is the Metra 40-CR10 and that's it. That's your basic kits. Now of course you could add other kits like aux and USB flush mount relocation kits or bypasses. It just kind of depends on the radio that you'll be installing here today. So what we're going to do here is begin preparing our wiring. Now what we're going to grab is our harness adapter and the harnesses that came with the radio. We're going to strip both ends like we've done here. We're going to load one end up with some heat shrink and today we're going to be soldering. All right, so what we've done here is we went ahead and soldered up all our connections color for color in this case. Um, the only one that may have been a little tricky is our orange here because there's two oranges. Generally, there's a voltage change when you turn on the headlights on the orange white, which is our dimmer. Um, the other one can be considered an illumination. Um, since our red wire, if you plug this in, there's nothing on the other side. There's no need to hook it up because it doesn't go into anything. What we did instead is we're gonna put a bullet connector 
Um, and we're going to put the female in on the other end so we can essentially uh, make that connection and still be able to disconnect it if we have to pull the harness. Everything else, like I said, is color for color. What we're going to do is move our heat shrink up and over those connections. We're going to shrink them down with the heat gun. We've already done it with our power ground and our antenna trigger. Um, and uh, once we get everything shrunken down, we're going to wrap it in some test tape. All right, so we finished our wiring harness adapter, got it all tested taped, taped up. We have our accessory uh, wire red that we'll have to hook up manually. And we are doing a backup camera trigger wire. And because there's really no smart harness for this vehicle, we have our trigger wire out, which happens to be pink in this one. And we'll hook that up in our other video. So you won't see this completed uh, until you watch our backup camera video. But we'll plug this in. We'll put the other blue end here on the other end in the car. So we have a quick disconnect. Now one quick thing to note about our harness. We've done a little bit of testing and realized that the dimmer switch wasn't actually dimming the radio, which would kind of be unsafe driving at night. So um, for us doing a little bit of testing in the car, we realized that there dimmer wired the 12 volts when the headlights are on that indicator is actually in this harness not in this harness and so what we did here is you can actually unlock this little plate here by simply opening this up we got ourselves a little pick tool get yourself in there once that's open you can pull on the wire what we did is we pulled out the orange and white wire came over to this harness same thing, we unlatched it, and we stuck our orange and white wire in that pin next to our green wire right there. See that? We stuck it in, locked it in, and now it's in place. So we transferred it to this harness, and we figured out that that pin, at least for us, is on uh, basically a switched source that's only on when you turn on your headlights, thus properly dimming your radio. So that's the only modification we had to do this harness. Uh, we're going to finish taping this back up, but basically we're done here. So let's turn our attention over to our dash kit. Now it comes with three pieces. This essentially clips into the factory bezel, and then these ends will allow us to, to mount our radio. We'll have to probably put it in and take it out a couple of times to get the depth perfectly. Let's grab our dash kit, get everything assembled. With our radio, because our dash kit pieces don't fit within the bezel itself, you probably have to go in the car, put it in a couple of times, and make adjustments so this seat's nice and flush against the dash bezel so there's no gaps. Okay, so at this point of time, with our radio done, our wiring harness done, we're going to grab our tent adapter. What we're going to do is now head to the vehicle to start getting everything reinstalled. All right, so we're going to show you two things here with this red accessory wire. We're going to show you the fuse box where you should tap into but we'll also show you where the previous installer tapped into which is fine we trace that red wire see that right there you use the t-tap and tap into that blue wire right there it is on a fuse um which is which is just fine that must be accessory power right there uh, but that may be a little difficult to get to you can go from up underneath here so you can kind of see my hand there um, to tap into that blue wire, they use the T-tap, which is just fine. See a little T-tap there, um, and that's there out of the way. Now, alternatively, if we go all the way up underneath, our factory fuse distribution block and our fuse panel here has plenty of spaces for accessory wire. Now, if you take this guy on off, this 7.5 amp fuse right center there at the top, that guy there, that guy's on switch power, meaning it's only on when the key is on. And we'll show you here on the bench the adapter that makes it super easy to tap into that for accessory power. It's called an ATA circuit. Now here at the bench, the easiest way to tap into a fuse, especially if that fuse location on the fuse panel already has an existing fuse in it, is an ATA circuit. Now we'll link this in the video description as well, but essentially here, this ATA circuit allows you to remove that existing 
fuse, for example, that seven and a half that we are looking at. You put that seven and a half fuse in this first slot there, and then you just add your own fuse. I'm gonna add a five, 10 amp fuse, that's plenty. Uh, there in that second set, essentially that retains that factory uh, fuse without putting any extra load on it while tapping into that accessory source and sending a fused run to your radio accessory circuit. So an add a circuit is an awesome way. You don't have to use T-taps, pull out that fuse, put it in here, put your fuse in the other one, and then crimp this onto that red wire that goes to your aftermarket radio. These are awesome. And again, a couple of bucks, that's all they are. And we'll link it down in the description. All right, so we're back here in the car. We are ready to start final assembly. So the first thing that we need to do is run our red wire. Now, like I said, we've already reused um, a harness. This has already been done for us. So somebody has already fished our red wire down to the dash that goes to the fuse box area. What we're gonna do is grab our harness adapter. Let's go ahead and make those connections. Now they are pinned differently, so you cannot get them backwards. They only fit one plug, got that all in. We have our intent adapter that already clipped into place. Again, we kind of reused that from the last install. And now at this point, we can connect our red wire to the red wire of our radio. We used a bullet style connector, so that's all in, so we can disconnect that if needed. Let's grab a radio here. Again, we spent some time to get the perfect depth of these brackets, positioning the radio in versus out, so it sits nice and flush against the dash bezel. So let's go ahead and make our connections here. Plug in our antenna. Okay, let's tuck everything back in the dash here. And let's go ahead and get a bolt in just so it's held in place. Uh, we do want to test things to make sure everything's working before we fully button it up. Okay, with the radio in. Now, what we did, see our passenger airbag light here? We actually took it out of the dash bezel so we could plug it back in so we don't trip the light on the dash. So we can safely turn on the key. Seems to be working great. Now let's go ahead and test our headlights. See how it dims? It's exactly what we wanted. That's why we moved that wire in the harness to a different pin location so we can have that factory feature work. Okay, everything seems to be working great. Backup camera is working good. Let's go for final assembly here. All right, everything seems to be working great. Um, very pleased with this install. If you have any questions on what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. Now we're gonna link all the parts that we used um, in this radio install in the description of the video, as well as other recommended radios in case you want to install one for yourself. If you want to see more on this install, like I mentioned earlier, we did a backup camera, which we did on this vehicle, to this aftermarket radio. It actually was included with the radio. If you want to see that video, we'll link it down in the description of this video. Um, so it walks you through step by step on how to integrate one of those cameras to this aftermarket radio. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw, and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. We'll see you in the next video.